Hey friends, this is Travis and she forgot her name. <laughs> Hi friends, this is Travis and Allie. We're from One Up Adventures and Fly Products USA and wanted to do a video on the Eco2 Lite with the RMZ 550 horsepower engine. <laughs> we've had this paramotor trike for several years and yet we've realized we've never actually properly introduced it talked about what it is and what it's used for. So let's get started. So there's a couple things that Fly Products has recently come out with accessory wise. And one of them was the trike cover. So we thought it'd be really cool to kind of do a big unveiling for this trike. We've got a lot of hours on it, but we really can give you a good input on what we think about it now. So we'll go ahead and pull the trike cover off. Dun, da, da, da. Dun, da, da, da. Dun, da, da, da. What in the world? <laughs> Time to release a new video. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, the Eco2 RMC 500 comes with a free Johnson Q automatic pilot. <laughs> okay, so we'll talk about what the Eco2 RMC 500 is and what it's not. First of all, let's talk about what it's not. This is not a lightweight, ultra portable trike. This is a heavy, commercial grade, very powerful, very smooth paramotor trike. It's not something that you can break down super easily and put in the back of your car like some of our other trikes, including the Flash Cruiser and the Foxy trike, but it is an amazing trike for a certain type of pilot. And this is not gonna be the every pilot trike. So let's talk about what kind of pilot is gonna want this thing. So I would recommend this particular trike, especially with this motor, for a couple of different pilots. The first one would be somebody that's going to be a heavier weight pilot. Uh, that would be, you know, it would give them the ability to take up a passenger or to take up a load in the front seat comfortably and not needing as much runway as you would with a smaller motor. I think the second type of person I would talk to about that is maybe somebody in a high altitude. Someone mm -hmm. flying in a higher altitude is going to want more power, something that they can easily get off the ground. They don't need the full length of the runway. Um, and then I think the third person, even for a lighter weight pilot, somebody who's wanting to take up a heavier load in front, whether that's your passenger weight or they want to use it for fly camping, that's becoming really popular, especially right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Cooler weather, they can take up their tent, they can take all their gear in the front seat. That might be the third person that I'd consider. Yeah, and to give a couple of examples of the capability of this trike, uh, we had a student who was 400 pounds uh, that we trained to fly trike. And part of our training program includes a lot of tandems at the beginning. So they've got an instructor right there with them when they're learning. And this was the trike that we used. Uh, it was me flying with a 400 pound student. We did over 12 tandems. And I still had plenty of reserve climb with a 400 pound passenger. Uh, we also have uh, a friend who has one of these who uses it for, like you mentioned, out in Montana to, to get into BLM land that's surrounded by private land to collect elk sheds. And he uses it as uh, storage to bring all those elk sheds back for sale. So that's pretty unique. But I'm gonna go back over the fact that this is a 50 horsepower trike. Spoken. And let me talk about the RMZ 500 a little bit. I believe it was 2003 that Rotax stopped making the very, very popular 50 horsepower Rotax 503 engine. And you may have heard recently, they also stopped making the Rotax 582. A company in Russia called Ruskea Mechanica picked up where Rotax left off. As you know, Rotax 503s really originated in snowmobiles and Ruskea Mechanica makes snowmobiles in Russia. And they made an exact copy of the Rotax 503. In fact, the, uh, if you looked at the case, if you looked at the engine, you wouldn't tell the difference between a Rotax 503 and the RMZ 500, except for the stamp on top of the case, which has the Ruskea Mechanica stamp. Additionally, it has the uh, Ducati ignition, which is just like the Rotax 503. It uses a genuine Rotax exhaust. Carburetors are both Makuni carburetors, same that's used on the Rotax 503. So essentially, you're getting a Rotax 503 engine. Um, which is very well known for its reliability, ease of use, and power. This is the Eco2 Lite. Now the Eco2 Lite, uh, you guys have seen it has, uh, you can get it with three different engine options. You can get it with the Cosmos 300, 160, 160 prop propeller. You can get it with the RMZ 500, also a 160 propeller. 
And you can also finally get it with a Rotax 582, which we have in the corner behind us, which brings you up to 65 horsepower. Big advantage of the Eco 2 over the Zenit. What do you think? So there's a couple different things that I think make this really that commercial grade trike that the rest of the trikes come close to, but just can't match. The distance between the pilot and the passenger, I think it's a much more comfortable system. Now, for somebody that's extremely short, you may want to use something like I do, which is uh, this, this wonderful <laughs> booster seat. Um, but really, it, it does give that distance. So when we're doing trike training, typically we have the passenger in the front seat and they're working uh, with ground taxiing skills. And so they're leaning back into my lap, which is a little uncomfortable when I'm trying to look at the wing as well. With, uh, with the Eco, it makes it a lot easier. There's so much more room. I think also with the it's Eco, wider as well. it's wider. There's more space front to back. And the Pilot, which is the flying seat, um, sits up quite a bit higher than the passenger. There's about, I don't know, I'd say about eight inches. So it makes it really nice because in most cases, unless you have a really tall tandem passenger, you can see above their head. Um, when we fly the Zenit, the seat's only about an inch and an inch and a half higher than the passenger. So it's much more common to be looking around the, the Zenit passenger's head than with the Eco. So visibility is going to be much better as well. I'd have to Eco. agree. Um, it's a heavier built trike. Being heavier, that means it, it's, it runs smoother over ground surfaces. It has the front suspension. It has the solid Ergal CNC aluminum rear axles and all the flex points, just like all the Fly Products trikes do. So you get a lot of flex. It's really smooth. I mean, it runs like a Cadillac, even over a rough, like, pothole, gopher hold surface. And it, and it does make it really nice, especially for ground handling in the trike. Now, being that it is a little bit heavier in this trike, I will tell you guys, it does push right against the edge of uh, far part 103 limits. Of course, it, it, it's a heavier trike, so it's not, it's going to be a little less, maybe like playful in the, in the air because of that. And it's harder weight. to have issues on the ground. It's more yeah. stable because it is heavier. It is wider and it's not a very high center of gravity. It, no. it handles really well on the ground as well. And this is the Premier package for the Eco 2, as we have it right here. So what the Premier package means is it does come with the three position Skyflar lights and the strobe lights and the cockpit and it's got electric start and a backup pull start in case you need it. The cockpit includes the Fly Henry uh, EHMS or engine health monitoring system, which displays everything that you need about the engine, including maintenance alerts and includes the fly box digital vario and altimeter so you've got that information at your fingertips as well your start stop and engine master and ignition switches on the cockpit which put everything into a really convenient place also when you do sit down you guys see this cockpit a lot of people think oh my god that cockpit's going to block my visibility the truth is it doesn't my head's down here i barely notice the cockpit unless i'm looking up so it's it it really is almost zero hindrance to our visibility when we fly this machine there is a reserve on this machine. Can you talk about the differences between the reserves and why we have different reserves for the motors? Yeah, sure. So the reserve on this trike, as it is, is a ballistic reserve. So that is a Camelli ballistic reserve. It's rated for 475 kilograms, which is over a thousand pounds. Um, I can tell you guys when I had my 400 pound student, we were pushing up close to over 900 pounds for sure, total weight. Um, so it's nice, you've got a big reserve, and, the, and a big advantage of the ballistic reserve also is that it's got a 3,000 PSI charge inside that canister. Mother of God. So you've got a handle over your left shoulder, you pull a pin to arm it before you fly, and if you need that reserve, you just reach up over your left shoulder, pop the handle, and that thing's gonna come out at over 100 miles per hour and instantly open. A lot different than a manual reserve where you gotta fumble down, find the handle, pull it out where you've got the reserve in your hand, look around for your glider and make sure you throw it and then wait for it to slowly unravel and open up. The ballistic reserve is rated for quite a bit higher than the highest rated manual reserve, which is I think 340 kilograms, or I'm sorry, yeah, 340, I believe. And, uh, and this is 475 and it's an instant deployment and it's gonna open up real quick. And because of the amount of force and the way that it comes out sideways, you should never have an issue with it tangling up with your glider. The thing's just going to pop right out there and open right up. So you can special order this without the ballistic. We stock them only with the ballistic reserve. Same thing with the Rotax 582s. They're stocked with the ballistic because we feel that's important to have that high rated reserve on these bigger trikes. And these are also commercial grade, you know, trikes. They're, these aren't, you know, these really aren't, 
toys <laughs> so much as some of the other trikes. So it, 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 we felt it's important to have that on there and that is included with this trike as well. So if you're looking at doing lots of tandems, having that ballistic reserve is maybe just that added extra safety feature that you would want to consider. The other feature of a ballistic reserve is normally like on a Zenit trike, we've got a manually thrown reserve that takes up all this space underneath the pilot seat. Well, because we have a ballistic, this space is all opened up down here. And I don't know, I, I could only guess maybe that's 25, 30 liters of space underneath there. So there's room, you can unzip that and you could probably put a, a snack, sleeping bag, snacks, uh, maybe a small one-man tent if you, ever, if you ever want to do any fly camping. So without even adding extra stuff to hold those kind of items, you've got a lot of storage space under the seat that's been freed up because there's no reserve there. Okay, I'm going to talk about the RMZ 500 engine a little bit. Uh, it is a 500cc twin cylinder engine that produces 50 horsepower. It has a, it is air cooled, but it does have a fan that is gear driven at the back of the engine that forces air through a duct past the cylinders in order to keep it cool. So it's, it's fairly simple. You've got twin float bowl Makuni carburetors. Uh, you can see the air filters here in the, on the front of the carburetors. Uh, makes priming super easy, makes starting super easy. No issues there. Uh, this engine, if you see, it's got a, it actually has a frame, much, much like an airplane. So this is engine support. So the engine support mounts to the trike. You, typically in paramotors, you see the engine mount directly to the back. But with these bigger engines, we use an engine support that mounts to the back of the trike. And then the engine hangs from underneath that engine support. Also a little bit different than the Rotax 503, we do not have a gear driven gearbox. We are using a reduction belt on this, on this motor. So there is no clutch. Um, but it has a super, super heavy duty belt. I mean, this thing, uh, we've probably got what, 40 hours, 50 hours on this thing by now. Uh, we've owned it a little bit over a year. No issues. If you look at the belt, absolutely no fraying, no signs of wear at all. Um, this upper pulley, this, the, I know you can't see on camera, but each one of those spokes is like that thick front to back. Um, so very heavy duty, super heavy duty starter ring gear. You've got your electric starter right here. And then like we said before, you do have a backup pull starter. Um, also with all of our Eco2 engines, you're gonna have a, uh, a choke to choke the engine behind the pilot. And also over here, which you can't quite see, there's gonna be a cruise control, which is really nice. So if you're flying and, you, and you're, you know, remember you're, with the hand throttle, you, you are manipulating two carburetors with springs. So it's a little stiffer than let's say a Moster 185 for sure. But if your hand gets tired after a while, you can just reach over your shoulder, set the cruise throttle, and you can relax your hand. And then you can adjust that as needed while you fly. So that makes it really nice and comfortable, especially if you're doing a long cross country. Uh, you want to do stuff with your hands. You can just set that cruise throttle, throttle, throttle. You can just set that cruise throttle. And then if you need to turn it off, just reach up over your shoulder and flip it off and go back to your hand throttle. This trike can also be purchased special order with a foot throttle. Uh, we don't necessarily recommend that because the foot throttle makes it a little difficult if you're going over rough terrain during taxi to keep a smooth throttle. But some people, maybe they've got issues with their hands, arthritis, whatever, the foot throttle might be the right setup for them. One more thing to note about the Eco, if you're looking at transporting it in a trailer, is going to be um, trailer size. So the width of it is roughly 78 inches, the length is 88 inches, and the height is about 77 inches. So while you might be able to fit this into a seven foot trailer, you're gonna have to do some wiggling and shuffling it sideways to get it past that lip that typically comes in a metal trailer. Um, so you might wanna size up just a little bit, but that is a good note. The other thing is this can fit in the back of a pickup truck. Granted, the axles will actually lay um, on the truck bed and the wheels will lay off the side of the truck bed, but you can fit it in the back of a truck. So we are going to load the Eco2 with the RMZ500 into my midsize Honda Ridgeline truck, just to show you guys that it can be done. Now, the caveat is I would not recommend doing that with just one person because this is a heavy trike. Sure, you can do it with a Flash Cruiser, maybe even a Zenit Cosmos 300, I cannot load this by myself. So we have some help. We've got Johnson and Allie. I'm going to put the nose up on the bed of the truck. Okay. We just push it forward a little bit. Oh, we're hitting the cable. Okay. Yep. So 
All we would need at this point is a, actually a single strap that goes up through the carabiners and to the front of the truck, which holds it down and forward. And you're ready to go to the field. And hopefully your friends are there to help you unload it if you're by yourself. In closing, we want to emphasize this is not going to be the machine for everybody. Uh, this is a powerful machine. It's a big machine. It's a commercial grade machine. For those of you who want that or who need that, say you live out in high elevations and you're doing tandems, uh, you're a heavier person and your friends are heavier people and eventually you want to work yourself in the tandems, or you just like the comfort of the extra space and the really nice ground handling and the reliability of this engine, um, I would encourage you guys to take a look at the Eco2 RMC500. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to call us at 1UP Adventures, 1-833-BE-ALIVE.